Hi, welcome to this tutorial where I'm going to show you how to make this really cute or two cute unicorn cakes. Now, depending on the pudding basin you use and what you have in your cupboard at home, it could look like this or like this. My name's Lynn and I hope you really enjoy watching. So the first thing I'm going to show you what to do is how to decorate the board with icing and sprinkles. Um, you can use all different types of sprinkles. I've got some rainbow sprinkletti here and I'm going to actually crush up some magic sparkles, white magic sparkles. And I've already rolled the icing out. It's Satina Candy Floss Pink, really pretty pink. And I've got a little bit of bold water that's cooled down here. Just a tiny bit on the board for the icing to stick to. I think I've been a bit stingy with this icing. I've probably rolled it out a little bit too thin. So if you've got enough icing, roll it out to about half a centimetre. Pop it onto the board. You can use your hands, but if you've got a smoother, it makes it just, you know, it just gives it that finishing touch. And then I'm going to pour the sprinkles into a bowl. This is a handy little hint because if you've got sprinkles that are different sizes, sometimes all the heavy ones pour out first. And with a spoon or your hands, just sprinkle them onto the board. Now, remember the cake's going around, around here, so you don't want to put them there because you're just wasting them. They will roll off some of them. I think that's enough. Mm, let's put a few more there. And then I've got some magic sparkles and I'm just going to take them out of the pot and crush them up with my fingers. And you're, you can see here, you know, they, they go all glittery. Like so. And then take your rolling pin and I'm going to really gently roll over the board and what happens is all the sprinkles get pushed into the icing. Just make sure, sometimes you've got stars or sprinkles on top of each other, so just make sure they're spread out. Oops, that one there. And gently roll over. That's it. And then, first of all, cut off any excess around the sides. And then the easiest way I find to neaten the edge is to pick the board up in one hand and just cut around the edge with a palette knife. Now you can leave it like that. I'm being really fussy here. So I'm just going to take my smoother and just pop it around the edge. So for the unicorn's body, I've baked two cakes. One is in a pudding basin. And then what I did is the underneath that, you're going to have a round cake, but it must be the same size as the top of the pudding basin. So this is six inches. And I'm just using an old board here to put it on, and then I'm going to move it onto my decorated board. So first of all, let's turn that upside down. And do you know what? Don't worry if it's a tiny bit domed because I'm going to cut into the cake a little bit there anyway. And I'm just going to cut this into two layers and pop some buttercream on. Of course, you can use jam, lemon curd, whatever frosting you like. I never go quite to the edges because as you push the cake down, it usually squashes out. So that's that one. And then let's turn up this one upside down. Now, yeah, I think I do have to cut that one down a little bit. So let's just slice across the top. A handy hint as well, to stop your cakes doming, Pop the cake mix into the pudding basin or tin and then cover it with a layer of tin foil. And where the cake steams, it keeps it much more level. So that's all right. I'm not too worried about this edge here because I'll fill that gap up with buttercream. So 
let's pop that on. And then I'm going to cut one more level in it. Be careful with fingers. <laughs> That's it. And now just put a layer of buttercream over the whole cake. I've tried to keep this cake really simple for you. So there's hardly any carving. Mostly when you do 3D cakes, you usually have to carve the cake into shape. That's it. So I'm just going to go all the way around, make sure it is nice and smooth. Perfect. So I'm going to have a little tidy up and come back and show you how to ice it. So I've got a kilo of white sugar paste here. I'm using Satina White. Give it a really good knead. Just sprinkle some icing sugar on your hands and the surface and your rolling pin in case it sticks. And remember to keep turning so it doesn't stick to your board. So I'm going to turn it again. If you need some more icing sugar, just sprinkle a bit more underneath. And try, because we're covering a circular shaped cake, try and keep the shape circular by just keep turning it. Now when you think you're getting to a stage where it's large enough to cover the cake, just have a little check. And how I do that, I'll just bring this in and show you, just pop it there, is I just put my rolling pin over it. I'm only doing it roughly, it's just giving me an idea so I know that it's got to be at least that wide. So I've got to keep going for a while. It does stretch when you pick it up, so it doesn't matter if it's a little bit smaller. I think that's about right. Let's pop that to one side. And then with your hands, or if you've got a smoother, my favourite piece of equipment, rub the smoother over the icing to get rid of all those marks the rolling pin made. And I'm going to move that to the side. See, always make sure that the icing moves on the board before you go to pick it up. <laughs> Bring your cake in. And put your hands underneath, lift it up. And I'm making sure that the icing sits on the board at the back. And then flop it over really gently. And just... Be really careful here, smooth the top because you need to make sure you've got no air bubbles. And then I'm just gently cuddling the icing into the cake. Don't pull it at all or stretch the icing. And just keep going around, you might have to lift it up. That's it. If it starts to fold like here, just lift the icing away from the cake and gently easy icing into the cake. That's it. Like so. Now, because that bottom cake was slightly domed, I can push the icing in gently. If the cake wasn't domed at all, I would have just cut a tiny bit away at the bottom. And then, first of all, cut off all the excess icing around the side. Put that to one side. And then, with your palette knife, start to cut away closer to the cake. Now, I would rather go back and cut more off 
then you cut too much off and you've got a gap. So the first time I go around, I cut a little bit away. And then with your hands again, push it in. And start to trim away, getting neater. That's it. That's it. And that's the unicorn's body. Now we're going to move on to the head. For the head, I've baked another cake in the same size pudding basin. So I just pop that upside down. And if you're wondering how I stopped the cakes mix sticking, I brushed in some PME cake release. If you haven't got that, just grease the pudding basin with butter and cut thin strips of grease proof and pop them in. So now for the head. I'm going to try and keep this really easy for you because I don't want a lot of carving for this. So the first thing I'm going to do is, because we don't want a circular head, I sort of want an oval. I'm just going to cut away some cake from either side. And remember, you can keep cutting, but you can't put it back easily. So I tend to cut small bits off at a time. I think every cake decorator has done this. You start carving a cake and you get smaller and smaller and smaller, so be really careful. And also, I'm cutting into the bottom all around the cake. Right, I'm just going to turn it around so I can see what shape I've got. Mm. I think I want the nose to be a little bit more pointy, so... Let's have a look. Another thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold it above the cake to see what it looks like. Mm, I think that's about right. Hold it above again. Yes, I think that would do. It's really tempting to keep cutting, but I'm going to stop. So there you go. Can you see that? Let's get rid of that. And I think I'm just going to cut one layer here and put some buttercream in. Look at that again, make sure that's right. I'm doing what I normally do. I keep cutting, I've got to stop. You sort of become a bit of a perfectionist. Let's have a look. Stop. <laughs> and then just smooth buttercream all over the top. Leave a little gap at the top where you can put your hands and hold the cake and do that last. All I'm doing now is trying to make it as smooth as I can so that when the icing goes over it's nice and got a smooth surface. I think that would do. So again, I'm going to clean up and come back and cover the head in icing. So as I did for the body, I've kneaded the icing, about 500 grams of white icing, rolled it out, measured the cake to make sure it's large enough, and then just smoothed over with my smoother. And I'm going to just pick it up and pop it onto the cake. Now I'm going to move it back here. 
first of all, smooth the top, make sure there's no air bubbles. You can feel the air bubbles under your hand and if you've got an air bubble, you have to lift the icing out and ease it down. The reason you don't want air bubbles is because <laughs> you could actually come back to your cake a day later and the air bubble grows. Um, and it's a bit of a disaster. Any cake decorator who's had this happen will know. So you get a big bubble in your icing. Tuck the icing tightly where you've cut away underneath. And first of all, cut the excess icing away. And then start to get closer. Now take your time cutting away the excess icing because you do want it to be really neat. You can even take your palette knife and just smooth it underneath the cake like so. Like so, that's it. So I'm going to get rid of all this icing. Now if this icing has got no crumbs in it, keep it because we're going to use it for the legs. Pop that to one side. And now we're going to bring the cake board in. Now, if I was doing this at home, I would cover the cake board the day before or the evening before so that the icing sets and I would cover both these cakes and I would leave them overnight because at the moment every time I touch the icing it's going to mark but if you leave it overnight you get a light crust on the icing and it's much, it's much easier to pick them up. But I'm just going to go for it. It's quite nice you can do it all in one go so let's move it as close to this board as possible. I'm going to put a little bit of buttercream there so it sticks. Get my palette knife ready in case I need to just go around the edge to loosen the icing. You can, if you want to, put both these cakes on boards, but I don't think you need to. And just lift it up and position it on your board, making sure you've got room for the legs, like so. I'm going to turn it around and have a look. That's it. And I'm just gently pushing it down onto the buttercream. And now I'm going to put a dowel in the body so that the head doesn't move, especially if you're traveling with it. And I love these dowels. They're by PME and they're hollow and you can just cut them with scissors, which makes them really easy to use. So measure it against the body and then you don't want it to come up higher than the head. So I reckon there would be fine. Really easy to use, look at that. Um, I might cut a tiny bit more off because the last thing you want is the dowel coming up through the head. Yep, that easy. And just push the dowel, I've already washed this, push the dowel into the cake like so. It might have been easier if I'd put the buttercream on before the doweling. <laughs> put a little bit of buttercream around it for the head to sit on. And now I'm going to pick the head up and sit it on top of the cake. So carefully, make sure you've got it in the right position. So, and then just pop your head onto the cake. Now, if you've got a little bit of a gap of the icing from the neck to the body, don't, my, don't worry because we actually are gonna put a ribbon and bow around the neck. There we go, all ready to start decorating. So now we're moving on to all the Baby Unicorn's features and I really tried to use products you've got at home. So I've got here this double-sided circular cutter set. And before we make and legs, etc., we're just going to indent a big smile. So I'm gonna have to lean round because I know what will happen otherwise, <laughs> the smile will be to the side. So. Just make sure you're looking front on at the unicorn. Work out where you're going to push the cutter in. And I'm just going to 
push the bottom part of the cutter in to make a big smile. Now, it doesn't matter if it's slightly off to the side. It's just going to look a slightly quirky unicorn. Cute, I think. That's it. And I'm going to use the end of my brush to just indent two nostrils. So that's it. Yeah, I think the smile is slightly to the side. When you're doing this at home, have the cake exactly in front of you. Right, moving on to the legs. What I've done is I've taken all the sugar paste I cut off, make sure you've got no crumbs in it, and I'd, I've added a tiny bit of modelling paste, probably about a quarter in weight of modelling paste, because I want them to just slightly firm up, otherwise they sort of tend to squash down. And I'm going to start with making the unicorn's horn. Very simple. I've got a cornflower pouch here, so I'm just going to tap it on my hands and a bit on my work surface. And I always start, when I'm modelling, I always start by kneading my icing and rolling it into a ball and making sure I've got rid of any cracks. Sometimes you can't get rid of all the cracks, but get it as smooth as you can. And then I'm going to roll it so it's narrower at the top. If you think it's too big or too small, if it's too big, just start again with less icing or add more icing if it's not large enough. I think that's... That's probably a bit too big, so I'm going to take some off and do it again. Go back into the ball. That's it. And start again. So now I'm going to... That's it. Roll it on the side. Now, I'm going to flatten it very slightly. And I'm going to use one of these circular cutters to mark it. And it's sticking, so put a bit more cornflour down. And I'm going to press the cutter in at an angle all the way up to give it some shape and do the other side. Like so. Now, what I've done here is I've taken a cake pop stick and I've just pushed the stick in, and I'm going to leave that to set because then it will be really easy to put on the unicorn's head. And I'm going to put that to one side. Moving on to the, the front legs. Take some more of the icing that I've put the modelling paste into. I think the most important thing here is to get them the right size. It doesn't matter how far they come up the body. Um, I've got hoofs to put on underneath, but they must be the right size. So there's two ways of doing it. You can make one and just quickly weigh the icing, how much you've used, and make sure you use the same amount, or make two balls exactly the same size and then mould them into shape. So first of all, again, knead it into a circle and try and get rid of any cracks. Then. You want two of the front legs, so I'm just going to start on my surface and I'm going to roll. There's no exact shape. I just want to make sure that the front, the, I mean the bottom of the leg is nice and flat to fit onto the hoof. Then I'm going to flatten it a little like so. And really, that's it. That's all I want. And you need two of them exactly the same size. For the back leg, I'm going to do exactly the same. Make sure they're the same size. Roll into a ball. Let's get these cutters out of the way. don't need those now. 
Make sure it's nice and smooth. And again, pop it on your surface and roll because I want this bit nice and flat to fit onto the hoof. But when you start rolling like on your surface, they will all disappear. So now I've got nice smooth leg. Flatten the end like so and just check it against the cake. I want it to be curved against the cake and you need to make two of those. Pop that there. Now for the hooves, I'm back to my circle cutters. And I'm show you, I'll show you how to make one, but again, make sure they're the same size. And this time, I want you to roll the icing out so it's nice and thick. And I've got a little trick to getting the underneath of the hoof nice and soft instead of a sharp cut. Take a little bit of cling film, pop it over your icing, and then cut out over the top. And what that does is it gives you a nice rounded shape. And all you've got to make sure, though, is that your hoof sits nicely onto the bottom of your foot. So you just need to make sure when you're making the legs that they are the same circumference as the top of the hoof. And you need to make four of those. For the ears, again, we're using the modelling paste. Little bit of cornflour. Roll your icing out to about, I would say about at least five centimetres. And then decide how large your ears want to be and cut out a circle. Cut the circle in half and stand it up and I just I want to have a little tiny point at the top and then curve it round and leave it to set. And again, you want to make two of those. Now, like usually I would say, if I was at home, I would cover the board the night before, make the cakes the night before. While you're doing all of that, make all of these decorations because then you can come back the next day. They're nice and firm. You can paint them gold and fit them all to your cake. So I'm going to tidy up and come back and do some painting. To paint the unicorn's horn and hooves gold, I'm using Rollchem Super Gold Powder. It's a really incredible powder. Um, you mix it with rejuvenator, spirit or a clear alcohol to turn it into a liquid and it's completely edible. So just make sure you get the right consistency. You won't really know until you start painting. So if you, if you start painting and the gold is almost see-through, add a bit more powder. So I'm going to move that out of the way. And start painting the hoops. So first of all, I'm just going to go around the top edge. Don't need to paint the whole of that side. Turn it over, whoops, and then completely cover the hoof in gold colouring. Now these need to be left to dry, obviously, before you attach them to the cake. And I, I reckon probably about an hour. So again, you could make these the night before. I have actually made this cake and painted the hooves on the cake, but you have to be really careful. <laughs> now move on to this one. So just paint around the edge. Sometimes the paint starts to get a bit thick and all you need to do is add a bit more rejuvenator spirit to the powder. Give it a good stir. That's it. I'm going to turn that over. I oh, can see a bit of mist there. Oh, I've missed a bit around there. So I'm going to pop those to one side. And what I've done is I've, I've stuck the horn 
in a polystyrene separator or dummy just so that I can paint the whole thing. Perfect. So I'm going to put the hooves and the horn to one side, leave those to dry and come back and do the eyes. So moving on to the eyes, um, I've just used two circle cutters. Just You need one about double the size of the other one, two small circle cutters. And I've rolled out my white sugar paste and some black sugar paste. And you simply cut the larger white circle out, smaller black circle. I'm popping that on there with some edible glue. And then to get this shape, take your larger cutter and just cut away nearly half of the black circle. So you've got a nice little eye shape. Right, I think you need to hold both eyes on before you stick one on. Work out exactly where you want them to go. Pop that one just to the left there. And that one, the other side of the nostrils. And just make sure they're even. And for the eyelashes, you can use either an edible black pen or just a tiny bit of black food colouring. And I'm just going to pop about three or four eyelashes onto each eye. I'm using a really fine brush. It does help to have a really good quality brush. And then this, oh, I'm going to have to turn it around for a minute because it's really impossible to do that way. And you're just going to make them as close to the other eye as possible. And then I've got some pink sparkly dust here. And I'm just going to, and a soft brush, and I'm just going to put a bit of colour on the nostrils and a little bit of colour on the cheeks. Like so. My ears are nice and dry. They've set firm. So we can put those on now. And again, I always I like to hold them in place before I actually stick them down. So we know we've got the horn in the middle, and I think that's about I think that's about right. And we just press those down. Yep. She's getting there. So I'm going to bring back all the gold painted hooves, the horn and the legs, and the next thing I'll do is pop those on. So I've brought back my legs, and I'm going to stick those on with a little bit of raw icing. You can use edible glue, but raw icing sticks a bit firmer. So I've just put some raw icing in a bag here. And I'm going to Put the first one on. That's it. They're on nice and firm. And now we bring back the gold hooves. That's it. 
Now, when you put the front legs on, you have to put the hooves on first because they sit on them. So I'm just going to hold them roughly where I want them to go, right in the middle. And so it goes that way up. I'm going to put it there, but I can move it if I have to. And if you find you've missed a bit of gold, don't worry, because you can always paint an extra bit of gold on. So there's those. And yes, I've got no gold on my hands. And so they are going to sit like that. Make sure that's all right. I'm just going to make sure that works. Which way looks better? Sometimes one way round looks better than the other. I think at the end, I'm just going to paint a little bit of extra gold on the hooves where it's come off. So they look in the middle. And now let's work out where the horn's going to go, right between the ears. So I'm just piping some raw icing onto there. And... Push that in. So all we've got to do now is we've got to do a beautiful pink and white mane and put the ribbon around, tie the ribbon around. Now I find it really difficult to tie ribbon around cakes. It sounds so simple, doesn't it? So you pop it around and tie a nice bow and then you spend half an hour trying to get the bow right. So I'm going to tie a bow first. This is just a little bit easier. So you can make sure your bow is nice and neat and tidy and then I'm going to put it on so that's perfect that looks so much better and I'm just attaching the ribbon at the back with a little bit more of raw icing it's a bit long so I'll just cut it a bit shorter yep that bow looks good That's it, that's quite neat at the back. Oops. I still end up playing with the bow, but that's definitely a lot easier than doing it the other way. Yep, so I'm going to colour up some pink icing and come back, finish the mane, and then we're just going to put a couple of sprinkles down the side and I think he'll be done. Oh, and a tail. See you in a minute. So now we're going to move on to the mane and tail. The mane comes down the head and slightly onto his body and the tail comes around to the side. And the icing I've used for this, I've taken white sugar paste or fondant and I've added a little bit of modelling, white modelling icing to it so that it keeps its shape. What it means is that when you make these twists, they hold their shape. And then I've added some cerise pink sugar paste into the icing but I've not kneaded it in completely. I've left it like this so that they are all marbled and all different colours. So I'm going to move this one out of the way and this one back in and first of all let's show you how I make these in and I'm making all different shapes, some big ones for the tail and some smaller ones for the top of the head. Just break some icing off Roll it in your hands, always into a ball first, and then just roll it in your hands so it comes to a point. If your hands get sticky, I've got a cornflower pouch and I just rub the pouch over my hands like so. And then just twist it around the top of your finger and create a little twirl. And just keep going. You need lots of them, so into a ball and then roll it around your finger. 
and I want them all different shades of pink and white, all different sizes. So this one's a nice brighter pink one. And now let's start sticking them onto the cake. So you can use your roll icing you've already got in a bag or edible glue, whatever's easiest. And it's just a case of popping them wherever you want to, where you think looks good, and just push them. So I want some coming over the unicorn's ears. That's quite cute. And I want them all different colours. And just... Put one there, that looks quite cute. There. Like so, little curl coming down there. Let's go. And I'm starting on the top of the unicorn's head and I'm going to work all the way down the back and then I'm going to do the tail. So you might have to leave me to it for a minute because I get quite fussy about where they're going. So I'm going to continue. So I'm still going, I've nearly finished. I'm just making the last few for the tail. And the tail ones have made slightly bigger. Curl it like so. So let's attach these on. Put that there. Where are we? I think the tail has to start right underneath the mane. So that's that one. Yeah, and maybe let's just have a look. Maybe just one more, that one, like that. I think, I think that's fine. Oh, let's just put one underneath. That's it, I think that's finished. So we have the tail and the beautiful mane. I think I'm going to put a couple of sprinkles on the mane as well, because I want my unicorn to look slightly magical. Down his side. You know, I'd love to sprinkle some of the small ones on, but I don't know how this is going to work. Let's just have a go. I'm going to put some glue on and let's just see if I can do it, if I can turn the cake up a little bit and just pop a few on. Oops, oh, I nearly did it. A bit more glue. Like so. I quite like that. I actually quite like that. I'm going to add a tiny little bit of sparkle I think to the a bit of the mane, I'll show you just to make it even more magical. This is a gold edible sparkle that comes in a pump spray. And the very last thing I'm going to do is go and find a pretty ribbon to go around the board. So I've had a good old rummage through my ribbon drawer. Every cake decorator usually has a ribbon drawer and I've got some pretty pale pink satin ribbon. I've put double-sided tape around the cake board and then it's really easy to attach the ribbon. So just carefully attach the ribbon. And while I'm turning, you can have another look at the mane and tail. There we go. 
I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial. We now have one very cute baby unicorn with a very quirky smile. <laughs>